What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I just wanna say a big shout out and a thank you to all of you people um, that are on this channel. I really appreciate the support and everything and the suggestions as well. So if you have suggestions to throw in the comments, you have you know things that you wanna talk about, like I encourage that. And uh, me wearing a mic today, that is part of those suggestions and comments. There is a microphone on this camera unit that we've been using, but I have been noticing and you guys have been noticing the echo in the shop. And I just think this audio from now on is just gonna be a lot better. So I appreciate the suggestion. And like I said, all constructive criticisms and everything is always allowed on this channel. And, uh, and it's, you know, 99.9%, .9 it's just so positive. So I, I appreciate, appreciate you guys. Let's get into this video. So this video is going to be on how to finish, metal finish, not full metal finishing, because there's some debate on that, but like how I like to finish metal after welding with a TIG welder. So uh, we're gonna use the Model A grill for this exercise. Uh, the last time we, we did this work, we did finish welding everything, and, and there are extensive videos on how things are lined up, how these panels are installed, how these panels are made. So this video, we're going to grind the welds, we are going to planish any warping and try and get this to a place of being done as far as the areas we've been welded. Um, so yeah, don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. Okay, so at this point, um, we've got this all welded up. We're ready to start grinding it. And because I'm aware that I'm going to want to hammer these welds a little bit, stretch some areas that might have shrunk, and just kind of manipulate the material so that it's a little bit straighter, because welding does warp things. You know, we try to have as little warpage as possible, but we know that the heat does affect sheet metal and it is mostly shrinking. Um, and you've ever heard of heat shrinking? Heat shrinking, the, the same principles work when you're just welding. And what's happening is that as you heat up a piece of metal and it becomes soft and heating also expands things. Now this is where it's tricky because we say that heat expands, but it also shrinks. Why is that? I'm gonna explain it. So when the material is soft and it expands, as it expands, that soft material is actually pushing itself against the colder material and compressing. And then by the time it cools down and the heat expansion is gone, it comes back together. And that material that got squished into the colder material, that soft material that got squished into the colder material, that doesn't relax back out because that happened. So that's where the shrink comes from. So you've welded and expanded and heated to the point where it compressed some of that metal permanently into the cooler material around it. And then once it cools back down again, now that material um, is not there anymore, right? It's been compressed into the material around it. That's why shrinking happens. Okay, so with that explained, what we're gonna do now is just take off the tops of the welds anywhere where there is more material than there needs to be. So when I've got a weld that's proud above the sheet metal, um, you know, some areas where I've been a little bit colder and added a little bit more material because maybe I was filling a gap or something, those are the areas that we wanna take the tips of the welds off, okay? Um, you don't need to take it all off right now, not at this stage, you just take the tips off so that we can hammer things without having a, a large tack or a bunch of extra weld that we're trying to push back into all that material. We want everything to be as consistent and even as possible. So that's the step now. So I like to take 80 grit on a three inch roll lock. You can use two inch roll lock, whatever. Uh, me personally, because I'm kind of cheap, I use, I only buy three inch roll locks and then I'll have a three inch backer and I'll also have a two inch backer. Reason being is that with a three inch roll lock, you can um, burn away the edge. And most of the time you, you're using one of these, you're using it on the edge and you're not really wearing the center of the disc as much. So I'll cut them down and put them on a smaller 
um, on a smaller backer. So buy three inch roll locks, cut them down to make them twos, and then you're kind of getting the most out of your discs. I buy these discs that are very expensive. They are 3M Cubitron discs, not sponsored by 3M, but I'm just saying these are the best ones I've ever used personally. If you ever get frustrated by buying three inch roll locks um, that are sandpaper and they burn up right away, these ones don't do that. Um, you spend maybe twice as much on one of these discs, but they probably last five times longer than a majority of the other discs out there, especially if you're buying cheap discs. Um, so 3M Cubitron is the best sanding type stuff I've used, um, if that makes uh, any difference to you guys. So I'll go with 80 grit, I'll knock all the tops of this off, we'll get it close. Then we'll have a look and try and feel any warpage, if there is any. There's not a lot on this, to be honest, but there is definitely gonna be some like alignment this way, especially in these flat areas. Flat areas always seem to warp more. If there's shape in an area, if there's contour and convex, um, when there's shape, it holds itself stronger. It's like an egg, you know? You, you, an egg is a dome shape because it has that compound curve. It's very, I mean, it's very strong. So that, yeah, um, that explains that. So I'm just gonna knock all the tips off of this and then we're gonna assess the situation, see what's high and low, try and get as much of that out as possible before we continue to finish it with other sanding techniques. So let's get to it. Rolock, three inch, 80 grit, right now. got a bunch of our ground down welds like I said we didn't go too crazy we just take away the proud welds anything that's sticking above the base material that's what we're just taking away as soon as we grind down to the base material on one side or the other that's when you stop right because you've hit the base material we don't want to take away any more base material we're just trying to work the welds so um, if there is a spot where you've hit base material and you haven't ground down the whole weld what does it tell you? It means that weld is a little bit low. Let's check out this spot right here. This will be the first spot that we're gonna address. And I think it's very easy to see. I've hit both sides with the sanding disc. The three inch roll lock has hit both sides and the top of the weld, but it is not hit on either side of the weld, right? Here and here. That is telling me that this is high, this is high, this is high, and then those spots are low because it didn't sand out. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to hit and hammer on that spot to try and bring that material up. I've got this, uh, this flat chunk. You can use anything that's flat, um, but I've got this little flat chunk of steel here. I'm gonna stick it in the vise. This is what I'm gonna use. So for this spot, I'm going to stick the, because I want this to be flat, the flat side can go on the flat part of the dolly. And then I'm gonna hammer on the back side to try and bring that up. The hammer I'm gonna use. I got this. Yeah, oh, you're gonna hold on to it? Okay. Um, I'm gonna use this hammer because it's got this little curved end. I can kind of get in here. This is a little bit difficult. I'm coming through the grill to try and get it, but um, this is the area. Let's have a look what we did here. This has definitely come up. I can certainly feel that it has come up. So what I'm gonna do now is check it with the grinding disc. So see a lot more of it sanded out now. There's just a little bit here and a little bit there. So we are going to Take a straight edge and double check that we're not making it too proud. So it is a little bit proud right now, probably because the back side of the weld had a bit of weld still there that we were smashing into it, which is creating more surface area. So now that we see that this is now a little bit too proud, we're gonna have to bring it back down a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is find something to go on the back side of this that we can hammer this way instead of this way. What can I use? I'm gonna use the edge of this dolly. So I've got this, uh, I think this is a kind of toe dolly, I suppose. It's got a straight edge here. It's a little bit rounded there. I'm gonna probably try and line this straight edge up to fit somewhat in the groove. And then I'm gonna hammer down. So I'm feeling for the groove, or, or this edge, I suppose. Look at that. We're not rocking anymore. We've got it basically dead flat. Oh, there's a tiny rock in there. A tiny bit of a rock, just from this being a little bit proud. So we're gonna go back again. Just gonna hammer a little bit more. Now we're looking very good. I think we're looking very good. Needs a little bit of a grind. So I'd say that's very flat. Yes, there's a tiny bit of a low there. I'm not sure if that's even worth picking out. It's like nothing, basically. But we could try. Try a little bit. So, Hitting down on the highs um, and holding, you know, should pick up the lows, right? The back side of this could be ground a little bit. Yeah. Part of why we're not picking that up is probably because there's a little bit of proud weld on the back side. So we're just gonna take care of that. That's how you know you've got excellent penetration too, is that you've got weld fully coming through on the back side. get much out of it, but it's something. Okay.
basically, basically perfect. It's got a little bit of something, but it, uh, it ground out nice and flat without removing much base material. So now I'm gonna do the exact same to this side. Just do the exact same thing, hammer it up, clean it off, and try and get them. So we've got this peak looking really nice. I've got it quite close. Um, you know, we're, we're looking very good. I'm happy with it. So the next spot, either side of here, I can't quite get a hammer into that. So what I'm gonna do is use the dead flat side of this dolly. I'm gonna put it up on the back side, and because the center is low, the center will hit on this dolly. And, uh, and I'm going to hammer on either side of the center so that it pushes the center up, right? So I've got the dolly on the back side like this. Right now, because the dolly's dead flat, it will be touching on the back of this and it will be touching, you know, maybe, yeah, mostly on the back of that. So I'm gonna hit here and here to hopefully bring the center up. And also I will hit the center itself with pressure on the back side to stretch the weld. You can hear the change in tone now that more of it is becoming flat. You are hearing more um, hammer hits against the dolly. So I'm kind of hearing that in a lot of the places now it's become a little bit flatter. I'm also gonna hit down this edge because it started to kind of crisp up a little bit. This roll was getting a little bit too sharp because of the edge of the dolly. Okay, we're gonna have a look with this. See my, my grind, my sand marks are getting closer to the edges of the weld means that that is sort of leveling out. Just gonna go on the back side, maybe take a little bit of material off if we have too much weld penetration. Just take a little bit of that. I'd like to get some more of that out. Um, what am I gonna use for that? All the sanding tools at your disposal, the better. Okay, this can reach in there for sure. Oh, not quite. I yeah, probably got most of it. Might have to fire a little bit. Yeah, it's good. Just a little bit. Now we'll try and bring a little bit more. Now we'll try and bring a little bit more of that out.
Yeah, we're still a little bit low in the center here. I would love to, I would love to get that brought up a bit. Do you have a more hook? I don't have anything that will actually sit in there to fully get it, but I might be able to get some of it with this. Just gonna use the edge of it a little bit. A little pick hammer would probably work well in that spot. Let's see where we're at now. Okay, we brought it up. We did bring it up. That's what we're looking for. Now that it's up a little bit, just gonna do a little bit more sanding. So got most of that. Still up a touch, right? So now I'm just gonna flanish that down a little bit. Have a look at the straight. Once again, we are dead flat. There it is. So it's all a matter of just manipulating the material in the way that you needed to go take your time. Like if the weld's too low to grind, you're gonna have to pick the weld up somehow and then grind it, you know? Um, and then just minor adjustments, just hammer and dolly. You know, this is flat, this is flat. Now we can kind of do this rounded corner here. Now this round to this round might not be perfect, but we're about to find out um, how well they blend. <laughs> Not bad, there's a tiny low right there. Um, and I can see that, that this kind of bulges out a little bit right there. So like we're gonna have to work this area as well. But so far this weld joint is looking great. We'll just get this other side done and then we'll move on to these rounded areas of the grill. All right, so um, that joint is pretty much done. It's not a thousand percent perfect. You can definitely see that I didn't want to go too far in this little spot here. And uh, there's another tiny spot on the other side that's kind of like that, you know? But this is how far I'll take something, you know? Like to get that tiny little thing out, it, it means nothing to me. It's, you know, a 64th of an inch of you know, misalignment or whatever. It's like not something to worry about. I know some guys like, guys and girls, I know some people that would take that and then add a tack to it and try and smooth it out. And I believe that that's kind of like a fruitless effort because if you were to tack that little spot, um, the tack itself is gonna heat and shrink and then it's gonna try and make itself a little bit low and then you're gonna be chasing it. 
and you know, you might grind it smooth again, but how much more base material are you removing by trying to get rid of that? That's, um, to me, too far. But, um, so next up, next up we're gonna take care of this. This is a bit of a difficult one because this radius is kind of a flow. It gets tighter here and gets fatter here. So we're gonna have to try and make this look, you know, nice and try and get this weld out without grinding too much again and without blending too much so that we're making the material thinner. Always be conscious of how thin you're making the material. You don't wanna to grind too much. Even guys that, that file, like you file, use a body file, if you use a body file in the same joint more than like maybe three times over, you're making it too thin, in my opinion. Um, so it, it, it's it got to be a balance. Like make it as smooth as you can without going too far. Anybody can just keep going and going and going and going and going and trying to make something smoother and smoother and smoother and smoother and have, you know, no filler because it looks nice. But there is a point where you've gone too far. You've sanded too much. You've spent too much time. You're not gaining anything by doing that. Um, so that's a balance that you'll have to figure out based on what you want a finish to become. So for me, next, we're gonna take care of these spots. We're gonna do the same thing. We're going to uh, pick this area up on this one. I've ground right to my material here and uh, it's a little bit low on this side. So we're gonna have to put a dolly on the back side, and I'm gonna hammer the high down to hopefully pick the lows up. You know, the rest of this looks pretty good all the way up through here, but let's repair this spot right now. So I'm gonna go find an appropriate dolly. Okay. So, in order for me to pick this spot up, I want to feel the dolly is underneath right here. That's what I want to feel. So I can kind of feel the dolly on the weld. So I'm going to put it up underneath this and I'm going to just start tapping this down. Okay, when I'm hitting this, um, have a look, I can bring this up, Elio. Go look at like that. Okay, right now you'll be able to see my hammer marks on this. That is where I wanna hit, and you wanna be able to see that your hammer is actually compressing on that spot. You know, you wanna make sure that those marks are happening. So this area is slowly being picked up, but it's not quite enough yet. So we might want to I think we're definitely going to have to grind a little bit of that weld off the back side. So we'll start with that because it's probably in our way. Now, I think my approach is going to be hitting it from the back side instead of the front side. We're going to try this dolly, but it might not have enough crown on it. We'll know in a moment. We'll do the same thing where we actually stick the grill onto here. And I'm going to hit these areas to align them. Okay, let's have a look how much progress we've made. We've definitely picked a bunch of that up. I think that this area could probably be ground down now. Let's just have a, have a quick look here. 
I think we need more in this area here, but this I think is pretty much the <laughs> Looks like we need a little bit more in both kind of areas there. So we're gonna work, we're gonna work this area. Yeah, if you hold it like that, it's perfect, Elio. Thank you. Let's see if we can't get in there with this one. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, we've got a lot of that away now. I'd say there's still some more areas that could be picked up here. There's one right there that's definitely a low. There's a little bit low here. There's a little bit low there. So we'll try and hit those areas on the back side. If I can remember approximately where they are. Okay. One of them is right here. There's another one. In this area, and there's another one. Right. See if we got those. Another common tool for what I'm trying to do is a pick hammer. Um, it's to pick it up, to pick up the lows, right? You've you've seen them before. They're like a C-shaped hammer. They've got usually like a little horseshoe on the front of them, and then they have a pick that pops up the bottom when you squeeze them. That would pick up these low spots. It's the same thing as what I'm trying to do with just the hammer. Yeah, I say we're pretty close. We're pretty close. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually even that worried about it. We're going too far. Okay, so that's just a bit of 80 grit again. This is just 80 grit on the DA. The reason I like 80 grit is that uh, it's harsh enough that you can take welds off with it, especially if you're using Cubitron. And um, it's also kind of smooth enough that it's as far as you need to go for somebody to uh, want to prep for bodywork and paint. Like 80 grit is, is kind of perfect. Um, you can also see some things in it because it gives it just enough shine where you could actually see some flaws. Like right now, we've got a little bit of a wave in here that I, I can tell that it's you know high, low, high. And, uh, and I could continue to work on this, absolutely. I could make that even better. Um, but we're gonna keep moving on because today we're, we're just trying to get you know, as reasonably far as we can on this and uh, try not to go too, too far, right? Like this, is, this side here, I, I would say is, is beautiful for being ready for body work. You could, you could body work that right now. Um, and, uh, and as far as picking up the lows, that's the main thing that I look for is, you know, if you can identify a low spot, address it, pick it up, then you can continue to grind and smooth that sort of deal. So now I'm gonna go back to time-lapse. I'll do this side, um, and then we'll continue to work on this grill till we're done. Okay, so got those nice and smoothied. 
By all means, this is not like a thousand percent metal finished perfect, regardless of what it looks like in the camera. It is not like that. When I do metal work, I am not a no bondo kind of metal god. It doesn't exist within me. So there's always going to be some kind of filler to make things perfect. And that's where you gotta know when to stop for you guys. Like if you want to stop earlier or if you wanna take it further, that's your choice along your metal shaping journey. This is as far as I take it. I take it to 80 grit. I try and make it as smooth as I can. I try and align the material as best I can. Next up, we're gonna work on the top of this shell. I did grind each side of this peak, but we are going to want to make that perfect so that it doesn't look wavy to the eye because right now it's not perfect. It's exactly, you know, flat on this side and flat on that side, but it's not filed to a, to a centered peak. We're also going to address this side and this side. I'm just going to planish a little bit on, on this side and this side, just hammer on dolly, small hits, multiple small hits to smooth this out completely. And then we'll sand it, same here. And then we're going to uh, put this edge into the center. Okay, so what I will use is, I will always choose a dolly that has got the closest face possible to the actual, like the actual panel that I'm trying to use it on. So this one's got actually quite a bit of crown. Um, it's, it's got a lot of curve this way and a lot of curve this way. So it might have too much curve for a place like this. So I'm gonna go find a different dolly. It's got a beautiful kind of slow curving radius this way, as well as a slow crown this way. This is the one I would like to use. So I'm gonna choose you know, the radius that makes sense. So I'm gonna probably be working in this area of the dolly. We have very little radius this way, which is the same way we have it on the dolly, very little radius this way. Um, and then, so I'm gonna hold this on the back side, and we're just gonna planish this out. When picking a hammer to planish with, um, it can be dead flat, but you want as shallow of a hammer as possible. Um, the higher the crown, the smaller the contact patch, and the more powerful it hits, which means the higher the crown, the more likely it is to stretch. So a flatter hammer is usually a planishing hammer because it can cover a little bit more surface area at once. And if you think about it, when you have a shape that's close to what it needs to be on the panel and you have a shape that's close to what it needs to be, as they're sandwiching the material itself, it's covering more surface area and smoothing out more bumps at once. If you think of a golf ball dimpled type surface, um, you know, when you have a flatter hammer and a dolly that's closer to the actual surface, as you hit them, there's gonna be a wider contact patch and it will be able to cover more surface area at once for smoothing, which is planishing. Planishing hammer and a dolly. So I'm feeling on the backside as to where the dolly is versus the hammer hits. It's nice to, uh, to hear the dolly on the backside and to know exactly where the dolly is. That's how you know when you can't see the dolly. Do you hear that? Do you hear this now? I don't hear the dolly anymore, even though I know it's there. That means that this radius, or this crown, this side of this, is getting up into an area that has more curve than the dolly does. So now the dolly is not in contact with the panel. So you have to either choose a different dolly for this area or choose a, a different part of this dolly for this area. This dolly has another curve on it this way. So I'm gonna use it against this area like this. And we'll see if it has enough. Ooh, it might not actually. Nope, that's not gonna work. For this area, because it's high crown this way and this way, I'm gonna go back to this dolly. It also, it also isn't gonna work for me. I don't hear it there, and I hear it there. So this is not the right dolly either. 
All right, so I've got this weird dolly. It's another one of the ones I picked up off of Marketplace. Um, very funky looking, but it is rounded both ways. I'm gonna use it right in this area here because I do obviously have a low I do wanna pick up right there where we've ground here and it's smooth on this side. We've ground here, but it's low right there. So I wanna pick that up by putting the dolly on the back side of this area and I'll be hammering down here and here to try and lift that up a little bit. I feel like I may have got it up. Let's, uh, let's have a look with a little bit of a grind here. Yeah, it's getting a little bit better. Try and pick it up a little bit more. I'm trying to stick the bottom of the dolly right there. I'm gonna hit on both sides. Okay, so you probably saw that I did grind a little bit of the surface to get rid of some marks. And uh, the reason I feel okay doing that is because those marks are very shallow, as well as I use 18 gauge sheet metal, which is a little bit thicker than all stampings nowadays. Also, it's thicker than the original material that was used on old cars back in the day. So like old American cars, rule of thumb, 19 gauge was what was used for deep draw stamping in Detroit. That's what most old cars are made of. A lot of newer cars nowadays, 20 gauge or even thinner. Um, I am metal shaping only with 18 gauge. I don't buy 19 gauge, it's very hard to get for me especially, and the shipping is outrageous. So obviously the exact same thickness of material would be nice to use when metal shaping, but having a little bit thicker rather than thinner is better in my opinion because you either have the option of going thinner than the original base material or you can go thicker than the original base material. It just makes sense to me to use it thicker. So um, I did grind a little bit of that away. I didn't grind all the marks out of it. There's still some marks in here, but I just ground a little bit, smoothed it out, got a lot out of it. Um, there could be some more shaping in here. I think that uh, it might be a little bit flat in that one spot. There's fine tuning that could be done, whether or not it's totally necessary or efficient to go that far. Again, it's up to you guys. Um, this is up to my standard of, you know, how it looks. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this side, and then we'll attack the peak together. All right, both sides smoothed out. Check them out, check them out, look at that. We got the sexy smoothiness. This is all smooth. He's nice, he's nice. Okay, now I've got a file here. Um, I will fine tune this, like really fine tune it once it goes on the car and we can put a tape line straight at it. But I want this to fade away a little bit, right? So. Um, the first inch and a half here, I'm gonna blend that out completely because I don't want this peak to just stop all of a sudden. I want it to fade away. And uh, so, we'll just give this last inch and a half.
I'm gonna change the paper. I'm also going to, um, because I, like I said before, we're not actually going to do any hammering right on this seam. I'm just gonna quickly take care of that. Let's, uh, let's quickly take care of that. I'm gonna cut down another one of these. See what I mean? Let's save money, let's save money. You know, you could have like a, a three inch, a two inch, and a one inch one get into different areas. Just only buy the number, like the, the three inch ones. Um, here's a trick Jordan from Bennett's Customs loves to use. I don't use it as much as he does, but um, I really do like it for certain things. And this is where you actually leave a little bit of the sandpaper and you leave it a little jagged, that's totally fine. Um, and you kind of allow these corners to be a little flexible, right? Because it doesn't have the backer against it. So the beauty of that is that when you are getting to areas like we're about to do, this will flex and kind of take the curve. Like this is a bit of a random shape. It doesn't matter because its job right now is to use the corners and the corners will kind of, um, will turn up and make a nice blend. So um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing with that. Like look at how nice of a job that does. Not only, I'm not just going flat, I'm also kind of going on an angle this way and, and so that the disc is kind of doing that. You know, you're not directly on that so that it's digging in. The disc is spinning like this and it's, and it's going like that, so. <laughs> Works beautifully for blending, just beautifully. <laughs> Getting out a couple of these little shrink. Okay. But like I said, I'm not gonna go too far because I'm gonna fine tune that on the car. It's not a perfect peak. It's kind of got a little bit of a, ra like a radius on it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and give this a wash over with the 80 grit so you guys can see exactly where we're at. Okay. All right, thanks a lot for watching everybody. We're gonna end this video here. I've got a little bit more work to do on the grill shell before we uh, get actual grill in it. There's some lips to take care of. I'm gonna try and figure something out for the bottom. I hope you guys got some information from this video about sanding and finishing metal the way I like to do it. I know I see a lot of stuff on media, social media, and where you know things are metal finished and, and, and it's a little bit of a mystery as to how somebody gets there. You know, and are they truly metal finishing it? This is not true metal finishing. True metal finishing, in my experience, would be using die chem, you know, highlighting highs and lows with, um, with a body file and picking up those low areas until it's like perfect, perfect. That's not, that's not how far I went here. This is not perfect, perfect, but it's 100% it's good enough um, as far as I'm concerned. Like, it will take very little filler to get this perfect and uh, by all means you could get the metal to be that perfect but taking maybe double the time 
So um, 80 grit is my favorite grit to take things to. You could go further, you could go to 36 grit. It's probably not gonna change much for the body guy. But um, for me, this is how I like to do it and I hope you guys learn lots from this video. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already thrown a comment in, uh, in this video, please do. It helps the algorithm, helps us out. And uh, Custom Crew is five bucks a month. You get 15% off at the merch store and you get a badge by your name so that I know um, who's a member when I'm, uh, when I'm commenting back. And uh, yeah, much appreciated everybody. Thanks Elio behind the camera and um, having lots of fun. Hope you guys are too. Have a great one. We'll see you next time.